Guidance is internal. Ignition sequence starts. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Permission to board. Permission to come aboard. Permission to board. Permission to bring me aboard. Permission to come aboard. Welcome to the Permission Granted Podcast. Here's D.A. Welcome inside the latest edition of the Permission Granted Podcast, everybody. The podcast that takes you behind the scenes of the DA show. We are always available wherever you can get the normal show, and that's on our iTunes feed as well as on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash the DA show, and on our normal website audio page, DA on CBS.com. Coming up here in a little bit, I'm very pleased to uh, to be joined soon here by One of my good friends back in high school, and I'll tell you why coming up here shortly. After that, Mraz and I will discuss the Papa Shot controversy that's happening currently here at CBS Sports Radio. And after that, Jolton Joe's going to join Mraz because apparently Jolton Joe, for working as the executive producer on Monday when Mraz was out, already has gray hairs and a whole fit of Ajita working with me. So that should be fun. But first, my buddy Pete is a longtime friend of mine going back to our uh, early high school years, ninth, 10th grade, and this is now more than 20 years ago. And we were uh, thick as thieves, and we always loved, obviously we're sports fans, but also sports video game fans, huge sports video game fans. And my sports video game dumb starts back in with the Atari days. My older cousin, Mike, he handed down to me and my brother, because he's six years older than I am, his old Atari 2600. And so we had that and like the old school sports games. And then I graduated to Nintendo. My parents got me Nintendo, me and my brother, like 88, 89, something like that. And so we had all the Nintendo games and uh, Tecmo Bowl, Super Tecmo Bowl. Tecmo Bowl is my first sport, real sports video game that I fell in love with. And then after Nintendo, I went to Sega Genesis. I did not go Super Nintendo. So I went to Sega Genesis in For Sega, I mean, the sports games were always kind of the crux of Sega Genesis, whether it was the EA Sports, NHL 94, um, on and on and on, the Madden games, et cetera. So, I mean, Pete and I, growing up in the early to mid-90s, all about all of those games. So it just so happens he recently took a picture of his current game console, which was a Genesis. I'm like, where would that come from? He's like, I just bought this from Toys R Us. I said, you can still buy these at Toys R Us? He goes, yeah, I could buy them at Toys R Us. I said, this is amazing. He said, I bought the games on eBay. I said, well, now I need to have you on the podcast to discuss this. So my buddy Pete Devlin joining us here on the PGP. Hey, DA, how's it going? It's going well. It was around this time that uh, we would play Sega Genesis for hours on end, and uh, we were huge NBA Live 95s. Guys, a lot of Madden 95s at the time. And then were we big NHL 94, 95 guys? A little bit. I mean, I think uh, a lot I know of I the, was. I don't know yeah. if you were the NHL guy. I mean, I, I had it. I played it like everyone else, 95, 96. Um, I, I think there's some kind of looking back from the whole swingers of cracking Gretzky's head open on the ice that a lot more people are more fond of that game. I was always more heavily in the Madden. Oh, okay. So I, I really still believe that NHL 94 and 95 are elite video games, but you weren't really an NHL 94, 95 guy. But, yes, Madden was the big one. And so we played forever, and you just told me that, like, what, in the last week? You've got two small boys. In the last week you or two weeks, you've purchased another Sega Genesis? Yeah, so there was a Black Friday deal at Toys R Us. Um, I go in there, and they have what they, I guess, are called emulators that are – it's right. a small pocket, like um, Sega Genesis, and it was for 25 bucks, and it came with 40 games. Um, and, like, actually, do you plug it yeah. into your computer? No, it goes right into the TV, like two wires. Oh. So I was like, this is a no-brainer. I'll teach my kids, you know, five- and four-year-olds, start them on something simple, three buttons, up and down, left, right. You went after the emulator, and that's just, like, two wires that plug right into your TV. Correct, and the deal was a Black Friday deal. I saw it, thought it would be a great way to you know start the kids off on a simple system. It came with forty games. I actually, said eighty, but forty of those games are really just knockoff games of. I mean, the 
ultimate low quality of Battleship and Frogger, but it's not called Frogger. It's like Cross the Street. That's Nintendo or is that Sega? It's something else. I don't even know who makes them, but they're like 40 unplayable unplayable games. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, even my kids were like, "This, is, what is this? And that's like a five- and a four-year-old. Right, that's like, a four-year-old saying, what is this? Yeah, like, <laughs> this isn't fun. So 40 <laughs> games right off the bat are gone, and then you're left with 40 really Sega classic games. The, all the Sonic the Hedgehog, Golden Axe, Altered Beast. Um, but what I did notice was that it didn't come with any sports games. Ooh, okay, so you buy the Sega Genesis emulator, and then you realize there are no sports games. That's really your wheelhouse. That's the only thing you want to play. That's that's what I was, you know, I wanted to kind of show my kids that it's kind of easy to play some of these sports um, on video games, kind of get them into, you know, what I was into. Right, and so, okay, so then you go on eBay, and you're looking for the old Sega games? Yeah, and I, I, I was looking there for a while, and then I came across this site called, I think, uh, DK Oldies. Okay. And it's got like I don't know eighty games. They say they're all refurbished, and they're they're anywhere from like ninety nine cents to fifteen bucks, or maybe twenty bucks, depending on if it's a really popular, cool old game. Okay, so like, what does an NHL ninety four go for? That went for fourteen ninety nine. Okay, that was the most expensive one I bought. And you bought that, and then did you go Madden ninety five? Madden ninety five, ninety nine cents. Ninety nine <laughs> cents for a Madden. Wow, we got screwed out of forty nine dollars in and or forty eight dollars and ninety nine cents back in the day. And every year after that, since we bought every Madden <laughs> right. until I think five years ago, so. The Do biggest, the math on that one. The biggest scam going was when they used to fish us for 50 bucks or 55 bucks every time one of these games came out every single year. But back then, what me and DA used to do was we would wait when they released them and we'd kind of like get the inside track on which <laughs> movie rental, video game rental store would have them. Right. And we'd kind of reserve our own copy and it would be like a Friday night and we'd get like a case of Mountain Dew and we'd play, <laughs> <laughs> we'd play Madden from like, you know, 7 p.m. to like 7 a.m. Right. My I know. parents would be like, why are you guys up so early? We're like, oh, you know, you know. Just wanted to wake up early. Little did they know we had not gone to bed yet. We were on our 300th straight game of Niners versus Cowboys. All jacked up on Dew. So jacked up on Dew and Doritos. <laughs> okay, so you get the Mad 95, then what else? An NBA Live or I something? Didn't, I didn't get NBA Live yet. Um, I got Madden. I got Tony La Russa baseball. Oh, huge. Um, and that was it for now with this sport. So okay. I got the three. Tony La Russa, I think, was four ninety nine. Okay, and we've you and I have discussed this for ages, along with your cousin KJ, that uh, the greatest tragedy in modern video gaming <laughs> is that Tony La Russa baseball is the best baseball game ever play or ever created in that era, and yet you couldn't save stats. You could not save stats for some reason. There was a glitch, <laughs> and. And even if you if you turned off your Sega for even a second, you lost everything that you had accomplished. It was keeping it throughout the season, but as soon as you turned off the, the console, it was done. You could not save it. I actually wrote a letter to EA Sports telling them of this, and they're like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. We can send you a copy of, like, last year's other baseball game or whatever. And it sucked that it was not nearly as good. No, and it's weird because, like, Tony La Russa baseball is one of those, like, flash in the pans. Like, they figured out a lot of things that I always felt was wrong with the baseball game. One, they made fielding kind of realistic. I mean, you're also, now we're talking about 1995 video game realistic. Right. But you could, like, kind of, like, take your time in the field and, like, show off the arm and kind of, like, it, you kind of played similar to how baseball really is. It wasn't like you had to dive for every ball and get up and gun it right away to barely, be, you know, throw out Cecil yeah. Fielder who's busting down the line. <laughs> yeah. And the pitching and the speed of the game, you could play a game in, like, 10 to, like, 15 minutes. It was beautiful. Not a half hour to an hour. Right. So what they, they had little little speed up of the game where they would, you know, just getting the ball back to the pitcher wasn't like a... You know, the guy stepping out of the box, and then they're throwing it back, and it was just very quick. Yes. Yeah. So, you, okay, so you purchase all of these. Now, I have not played any of those, I'm sure, in 15 to 17 years. Upon retrospect, as you play them again, do they hold up? I, surprisingly, 
Madden 95 was the most disappointed I was in the quality of play, yeah. like the way it looked. Choppy, um, robotic. Very choppy. Yeah. I, I can remember that game just being, it was like, holy cow, look at the way these guys move. But that's also coming from when we were playing with Christian Okoye in... Well, he wasn't Christian Okoye. I think he was number 35 of the Chiefs, KC. <laughs> KC number 35, that yeah. he would just bust it with him and Barry Ward up the middle. Right. For, Tecmo Bowl still – Tecmo Bowl actually does hold up. I have played that before on the computer. Super Tecmo holds up. It's um, The only thing is that it's not as realistic necessarily as Madden. You know, it's not as variable. And, and so Madden became more intricate, but Madden's graphics were pretty – pretty choppy up until the late 90s yeah that's the that's the biggest thing i mean the highest quality is by far the nhl okay so nhl 94 does that hold up yes that's that, it's so much fun to play it's easy to play it's it's like getting on a bike again when you start playing again it i mean and it's also funny now to to see the names i mean yeah <laughs> these guys yeah you can still play with yager which is crazy yeah, well, what's sad is that I actually host a radio show, and I know more about the rosters of the NHL in 94, 95, 96, 93 than I do today, only from that video game. Like, we had Ronick on the show, actually, in studio last week, and I was asking him about his ratings in that game. I'm like, do you have the best slap shot in NHL 94? He's like, no, that's not that's not me. I'm like, that's correct, because Al Iafrady does. Right. Like, there's no way I would know the equivalent today of what Al Iafrady would be. But at that point in time, that game makes all those guys legends. Really did. And it's, it's shocking how much fun it still is to play. Because it's simple. Again, it's like, you know, two, three buttons, and you're just going up and down the ice. Fun and then um, and then Larusa. What's the breakdown there? Larusa is I. I still think it holds up, okay. but I think that's kind of like a homer because I just <laughs> love the game so much. Okay. But then it also goes back to like that's also you have like every guy on those rosters. When I was like obsessed with like still collecting baseball cards, right. playing Stratomatic baseball, right. so. <laughs> <laughs> Like, when I see these names, like, you know, um, they have, like, on the Yankees when I played with them, it's, like, Roberto Kelly still on the team. <laughs> um, Andy Stankiewicz is your shortstop. <laughs> Dion James. I mean, these guys are <laughs> they're the pre-core four. <laughs> right. They're right. That's the original core four yeah, right there, the actually. Yeah, terrible, the terrible <laughs> three or something like that. And Danny Tartable's on the team. Too, okay, so so that would actually be the original core four then. That would be Roberto Kelly, Danny Tartable, Andy Stankwitz, and Deion James? Correct. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the four horsemen of the Yankees. Of the mid-90s, of the early 90s. Yeah, okay. so, so those games, I mean, it, that's it, it's still got the fun, you know, it's still realistic where you got to warm up pitchers and you know, it, it has good gameplay. The graphics aren't that bad. It's, I mean, it's a little techmo y as far as the design of the guys. Yeah. Um, but the rosters just make it for me because this, I mean, this is like early 90s legend. <laughs> on Will you end up buying anything else? Like, I had FIFA 94 back then. I don't know how that holds up. Um, I definitely had NBA Live 94, 95, 96, all those. Will you buy any of the other ones? I want to get the. I'm, Want to get the NBA Live where you could draft the Grizzlies and um, and the Raptors and the Raptors. I don't know which year that was. I'm okay. hoping it's '96 because they have '96 for sale for 99 cents. <laughs> because I just always want to draft Big Country with the first pick and like just pound it inside of Big Country Reeves. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. So you're going to go down that road now. Did you say that Sonic holds up really well? You were saying, right? Yeah. I mean, as shocking as that sounds, and I mean, my kids love it. I got on there, and it's like, it's like all of a sudden you remember like where all these like hidden passages are, like all these different levels and stuff. It was really, it was kind of bizarre. <laughs> okay. All right. So, but I would think that Sonic held up because it was built in the Mario mold where you just start at the left side of the screen and just have to keep going to the right side of the screen. For and so, the most part, yeah. You know, and so it's like video games lost that, and I'm not saying that I have any idea what's going on with video games anymore, but I always felt like once we got off that track, I couldn't figure out what we were doing anymore. I, I bought Miami Vice City. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Um, Grand Theft Auto Grand Vice Theft Auto, City. Grand Theft Auto, yeah. 
And it was cool, and no doubt, like, wow, there's a video game with hookers, and, like, you could kill drug dealers, and that's that's wild. But I, I didn't know what I was doing. There was no direction, and it was because I had been trained in the Atari, Nintendo, Sega Genesis of you start on the left side, you just keep moving right, and eventually you'll get to the end of the board. Yeah, there was, I mean, I, and I even went with the, the sports games, too, that it just got too complicated for me. I bought an Xbox One when I was in that mid-20s crisis. Yeah. And I was like, sweet, like, this is unbelievable. I get the Madden, and the only play I could do is a halfback lead, like, left, <laughs> right, left, right. Because every time I drop back to, like, throw a pass, first the buttons are a little bit different on Xbox One from the PlayStation. Yeah. So, like, if I hit X, which was the bottom, now it's, like, on the left. So I'm, like, looking on the right-hand side. Also, my quarterback's throwing it 50 yards down the field on the left. Yeah. So it was just chaos when I was playing Madden. <laughs> and I couldn't do anything. And then you go online, and you got, like, 12-year-old kids just running all over your team, talking trash. And I was like, this is not, this is not where I need to be right now. Yeah, I remember I, I tried to get my dad to sit down and play some some video games, some Sega, maybe some early PlayStation back in like the mid-90s, late-90s, and he had no idea. He couldn't do anything. He had never played really video games before, and I'm like, oh, God, Dad. And then I realized that I had become the dad because I, I, I did like a, a Madden tournament back in the early 2000s um, with a bunch of listeners when I was working in Kansas City, and I got so housed. People are like shifting blitzes. And, like, you know, changing everything at the line and calling audibles. I had no idea what to do at that point. I'm like, well, now I'm the dad. And then yeah. I, then at that point, I was like, I have to retire. Yeah, I mean, I really have a lot of respect for, like, the guys that have stuck with it, that have made that transition, that have gone from, <laughs> from Genesis to PS1 to PS2 to Xbox to Xbox 360 and whatever else is PS4. I don't know, PS4? I don't know. Yeah. Um, but those guys have stuck with it and have you know, hone their craft and can still play Madden and are really good at it. Like, I can't, I can't even pick plays. It's like, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, they're, they're kind of like the Belichicks of football gaming, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they've, they're re- gamers, yeah. They've so reinvented literally. themselves, right? They, they, they've, they've recreated and reinvented their, um, their abilities and their their strategies and everything you got to give them credit. It's like Belichick going from a defense first run heavy offense to opening it up with Welker and Randy Moss. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Hot take of the year, right there. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a chance to plug your blog. Oh, okay. All right. So you actually do music reviews, band reviews. Yeah, I mean, me and my um, me and my buddy were both working on um, finance. Midtown Manhattan, and uh, kind of keep ourselves um, tuned in, you know, just with music. That's one thing we have involved with. We still like, you know, to go out see live bands and sometimes write some reviews and pick out some songs we like, uh, mostly like, you know, rock, indie, uh, country rock type stuff. Um, it's called backofthecrowd.com. Backofthecrowd.com. My favorite image would be you sitting down and and playing Tony La Russa baseball while Rusted Root was playing in the back. <laughs> then I would really feel like you are totally stuck in 1995. Yeah, that would be, uh, that. I don't know. That could happen still. I'm not sure. <laughs> that could be happening on Friday night. <laughs> it, could, it could be. Get the kids to bed early, honey. Get the Rusted Root out and... NHL 94. <laughs> big night. Big night. Big, big, big night. Pete Devlin, one of my best friends of the world, joining us here on the uh, Permission Granted Podcast. Dev, it's always good to talk to you, buddy. Thanks. All right, DA. All right, thanks to Pete for joining me here on the Permission Granted Podcast. And Mraz joins me now. Mraz, we are already, I mean, just consumed by controversy here inside the <laughs> DA show and CBS Sports Radio walls because of the 24 hours of Papa Shot that we had here in the newsroom. 24 hours that will live in CBS Sports Radio infamy. I'm glad we actually got documentation of this. I took pictures of you taking shots, me taking shots. We put them on our um, on the Instagram page, put them on Facebook as well. But give me the story, the background here. Yesterday, which was Tuesday, Sales department just dropped by and was like, hey, we got a pop a shot for you? Uh, Essentially what has happened is here at CBS Sports Radio, we are with a family of CBS stations that take up two floors in a Manhattan skyscraper here to break it down for the listeners. On the floor above us, they need to clear space because they're moving some people from corporate from midtown Manhattan downtown where we are. 
So they had to clear out oh. some area. Oh. So WFAN in New York has a promotions team that I guess takes this pop, huge Papa Shot machine, you know, the basketball machine that you would have, you know, at arcades and stuff. It's they, a two person Papa Shot. Exactly. And they take it on the road when they do events over the summer, uh-huh. uh, whether it be block or different charity events. So during the winter, they need a place to store it. No longer do they have the room up there. So they were coming downstairs and basically doing a tour of this floor, seeing good spot to store it. And they came down and they saw where our refrigerator was, that we had a spot to move our refrigerator. If they put it where our fridge was, it was the perfect space for it. A mini fridge. A mini fridge. So the guys of promotions ran it by myself and a couple other people that I will rename uh, Interesting name that nameless. promotions went to you as though you have any influence. Uh, essentially, yeah. They didn't go. Uh, they didn't go to our bosses in the back. They went to the cronies. And of course, my reaction was, "Yeah, great. Let's put a Papa shot in right. here. Why not?" I figured, hey, you know what? The newsroom needs to be spiced up a bit. Having a little basketball in a sports radio newsroom makes sense. So that was uh, that's where we lied, and we moved some stuff out of the way, and we had them put it in. So they put it in yesterday, and uh, everybody plays Papa shot all afternoon yesterday and all evening. Basically, yeah. I mean, we it's there, right? So we're going to get the jitters out of us. We're going to we're going to play. And I got to tell you, morale was up in the newsroom. We've often joked about uh, Berman or or other guys generally looking depressed Low on days. Morale, yeah. morale was at an all time high yesterday because of the Papa Shot. People were happy to be here, which was a good sign for CBS Sports Radio. Yeah, I think that we were far less productive. Uh, you probably. But yeah, I walked in and Berman was playing, and then you were taking some shots. I heard that Adam Gracia was a big uh, Papa Shot right. guy. So everybody was getting into it after the after the show that we had. You took some shots. I took some shots, and uh, I'm figuring, well, this is good. This is makes for a fun newsroom. It's um, you know, it feels almost like a West Coast startup tech company where you have a lot of fun <laughs> stuff around and you want to keep everybody engaged and having a good time. And then I get a text from Berman today with Oof. you, with you, and uh, with me, the thread, the three of us. And he broke the news at like 1 o'clock this afternoon. Papa Shot had already been taken down by the bosses. Yeah, gone. Packed up. The tent was packed up. They pushed it in. It was almost like a bounce house that got a hole in it, and they deflated it. They took it right away. Uh, and it was as if the FBI had come in and seized everything from us, all the fun. Yeah. And uh, morale since then has been sucked out of the newsroom again. Uh, we had gone in a roller coaster a little bit. So morale back down as uh, our boss, uh, who came out and basically rip, ripped it out. What was the reason? Did you get a reason? Well, see, I'm a little confused. There's some uh, reports going on for people that were here in the morning. Now, our boss was, here's the problem, and I, and I respect our bosses in their right, was not notified that this would be put in the newsroom, right? Uh-huh. So, which is wrong. Uh, myself, I probably, since I was there, should have went back to the boss, but I didn't because it was almost like the old, uh, I want to ask for forgiveness, not permission theory. Sure. Uh, and he basically gave us the green light, said, hey, listen, don't make me take the balls away. Don't abuse it. Fine. Whatever. And then something happened overnight or something happened this morning where I'm told some people who were not involved in the decision that were part of the newsroom were not having it, not happy, called it a distraction and demanded the bosses rip it out, which I cannot was not there. So I cannot vouch that that's a complete fact. And then our bosses came out and basically said, that's it. Enough of this thing. Well, wait a second. So was this fellow employees uh, here at CBS Sports Radio? Yes. Was it like promotions department or the bosses oh, no, no, or no, the no. sales department? People, a part of the CBS Sports Radio newsroom who were not there the day before and not a part of the decision, like, hey, let's put this in here, apparently were not happy walking in and seeing this basically monstrosity in the middle of the newsroom and, and demanded to the bosses, how could you let this happen, get this out of here? But I don't understand. What would be the negative to it if they're just, if they're part of the newsroom? You know, not not wanting to have fun, feeling like uh, if somebody's shooting or something like that, it distracts you from your job. To be honest, it's a little bit of a reach. However, mm-hmm. as much as I was in support of the Papa Shot, since it has been gone mm-hmm. uh, today, I must say part of me is seeing the distraction reasoning being accurate. Okay. And let me explain why. And I'm probably going to get killed by this by fellow members of Newsroom who are happy with the Papa Shot. I have counted not one, not two, not three, but four people from sales departments throughout CBS Radio Coming in this afternoon looking for the Papa Shot to take shots. You know, one purse, that's one thing. So, you know, we don't want our newsroom becoming a traveling circus where everybody in the building comes in. That does become a distraction. And to be honest, you want nothing to do with us any other time of the year. Suddenly we have the arcade. You want to be best friends with the guys with the arcade game in here? Right, right. So if that was going to be the case, which never dawned on me yesterday when I okayed without proper authority to put the machine in, you know what? Get lost. I don't want you in my newsroom. 
you know, it's true. The sales, the sales kids never come around CBS Sports Radio Newsroom. Never. No, no, unless there's free food or something like this happens. Yeah, they, they don't want to they don't want to rub elbows with the, uh, the, the hogs. Don't want to introduce themselves, nothing. So that's true. It would have been a parade of the sales kids, all, you know, kind of 20-somethings usually that are getting uh, their feet wet in radio right. sales. Taking or, a picture, putting it on Instagram, showing their, you know, tough day at work, you know, that whole thing. Right. They, there would have been a parade of nameless, faceless sales kids that came in here to do Papa Shop. Nameless, faceless is accurate. Yeah, and they would have never, I mean, it just would have been a never-ending parade of these people that you never heard of and never would be introduced to because they would never come in and be like, "Hey, how's everybody doing? This is my this is my name, whatever." They just wanted to come in, pop a few shots, and then go back to the sales uh, quadrant. Exactly. So this dawned on me today in the newsroom after everything had already settled, it was gone. There was no coming back from it. As I noticed, and again, I kept counting. I go, this is the fourth person now that's done this. Mm-hmm. And I said, you know what? Get lost, man. Take mm-hmm. a hike. I don't need Papa shot that badly in my life that I need mm-hmm. somebody I've never seen before piling in here. Do you feel like you would go to the sales quadrant if they had Papa shot? No, I would not. I truthfully would not because you know what? I don't deal with them. I, I have my own little world over here. I deal with who I know. Right. I would feel awkward and weird and uncomfortable doing that. Like they like there's times that a bunch of pizzas get ordered here, mm-hmm. right, for the staff here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they'll come, you know, it's like they're roaches crawling out from underneath. There. Oh, I hear this pizza in here coming to take its slices. Mm-hmm. If I heard there was pizza in the sales room with people I don't know, you think I'm my, you know, robust ass is walking back there to get very some slices. Very robust. Very right. robust. Right. I know. I'm, I'm going to feel uncomfortable and weird because I don't know you and I'm taking the pizza that was ordered for you. The thing is that I would have no problem with the sales team and the on-air staff mingling more. I've worked at radio stations where it was pretty tight and right. it was awesome. And, you know, the sales team really works with you and works with your show. You work with them. And I've always had a really great relationship with the sales team because I realize that they can do a lot of great things for your show, a right. lot of great things. But there's a real divide here because we're corporate and a lot of the sales are local sales. Exactly. We're national, they're local. So there's a divide and nobody kind of knows one another. And there is a real disconnect. And you're right, they just kind of crawl out of the pea pods when the, when the food of the Papa Shot's around when in reality, everybody should do a much better job at introducing themselves. Exactly. It's just rude. You, it's like you only want, it's almost like, uh, you know, your parents get divorced, your dad moves out, you want nothing to do with your dad, but the moment you need money, you're knocking on his door. <laughs> so no more Papa Shot. That's a, a crushing blow to the morale around here. The other thing that was a crushing blow to the morale was young, hungry Jolton Joe uh. getting his first taste of being the executive producer. And, uh, to be fair, and no. And spitting it right back out. Not even his first taste. This is like the second or third time he's done it, but for some reason he folded like a card table. This happened on Monday. You had the big blue giant flu because there was a Giants game that day, and so you took off and you had this off forever. Right, which now my boss has picked up on my off days being used yeah. sporadically on Mondays and <laughs> Thursdays. Like, yeah, right, exactly. And so Jolt and Joe slid into the executive producer chair, and uh, he just wasn't ready. No, he wasn't. He, just, he, he wasn't. And I, I thought he was. You know, we've talked about how hungry he is and how ambitious he is and what a hard worker he On is. On this Permission Granted podcast in the past, we've discussed how he's like the next great thing at CBS Sports Radio. Yeah, he's got all the, he's got all the right moves. And yet, for some reason, Monday, he was totally flustered in every sense of the word. It's really like you have a prize pitching prospect that comes up from AAA, has a couple really good starts, and then all of a sudden, like, he goes once through the league – Comes back, the league starts showing him yeah. that second time around. That's what happened to Joe on Monday night. I could tell you, I, you know, I had off, and, I, and I'm very good about this. I really am when I'm off, and I tell guys like Joe or James or anybody filling in for me, my phone's on. If you really need something, call me. I'm not going to shut you down. But when I tell you, D.A., I was with a couple buddies all day. We did Christmas shopping. We did happy hour. We got together for the game. I had at least four phone calls from Joe at, at frantic points throughout the day, panicking over the little things more than anything, and stuff that... Quite frankly, I thought he should have been, you know, been a little bit more prepared for, if you will. The only thing that I could understand him being a little flustered by was that we had Howard in Salem, Massachusetts call in and do the whole why is the sky blue nonsense. And I was like, he's definitely called before. I know this guy's called before because right. I've, I've done, gone down this road. And I'm like, Joe, during the break, I said, Joe, we got to find the last time this guy called. And so that does – now. now it becomes – like a treasure hunt in the middle of doing an already kind of chaotic show. I get it. There's no doubt that that could be a chaotic position. But it was like throwing this in. He had no idea how to handle it all. And I guess his assistant producer was also an inexperienced guy. Right. So that didn't help. Like if he had Ward next to him, maybe that would have been way different. Definitely. But it was just like 
it really threw him for a loop. And then I, my surprise was that his his um, problem solving was very poor in the moment. Right. That's see. That's the problem. See, if you're if you're asking me quickly, hey, do you happen to remember when this call was? That's one thing because he may not have been here. Could have been worn in that night. And I totally get that. But it evolved from when I took a guesstimate as to where it was as to, well, now I have completely no idea how to find something like this. Like he panicked instead of thinking. So therefore, I had to hang up the phone with him. I'm, you know, I'm drinking with buddies. They're looking at me like, dude, come on, can we relax here? And then I had to think. I was almost like back here at the office thinking for myself, okay, quickly, how can I figure this out? And I remembered a way to do it, how we can go back to a caller log. And I told him it was like he had no idea how to do that whatsoever. And I had to walk him through without the computer in front of me, had to step by step click the proper buttons to get back and actually track what people have called. And finally, I guess that helped solve things. I might have had the month wrong originally, but, you know, he couldn't think of that. And it's just, Joe, what are you doing? Yeah, I, it was, he could have gone back to our archive of epic fails. Right. He could have. Um, you know, pulled the specific show that we thought it was from because we had kind of connected the dots on that. But it was almost like everything was too overwhelming for him. It's like in separate episodes, he could do all of the things, but when put together, it was sensory overload and he didn't know what to do. He melted down. He's really got to rethink himself. I hope this was a real learning moment for him. Luckily, the listeners probably didn't notice there was any problem with the show whatsoever. No, I would assume. we rolled right along, and then we eventually found it. Right, and exactly. And so we played it after that, and everybody loved that we found the back, the backlog, the archive of the first time it happened. It ended up being funny. See, my lesson for Joe here, ironically, I can't believe I'm going to go to this. You don't want to go too much Steve O'Moralia here, but I learned because that when I first started with you on the overnights, I think I panicked a couple times. Just, you know, things get overwhelming. The old Eli Manning line of scrimmage, the old Steve-O approach— be calm, because no matter what happens, you, if something goes wrong, you're going to be alive in an hour, right? And the listeners have no idea. The listeners have no idea, right? So just take a deep breath. You know, wor- worst comes to worst, you know what? You didn't find it. You'd be ticked off for a couple hours that, you you know, you didn't get the audio you wanted or whatever. But if you, as long as you put an honest effort in and you believe in yourself that you did all you could, what can you do? Everything will be okay tomorrow when you wake up. And also, Joe's a smart enough guy. It was like, it was right. very... Right, he's not an idiot. No, it was so... there would There's always a way to solve it. It's just you have to kind of take a breath and look at all the options, and he just right. And so he's texting you: Can DA get lost? Or yeah, can, he get... can can DA get get serious? <laughs> Do I need this tonight? And you'd better not be out tomorrow. Like that's what happens in live radio. Sometimes a hysterical thing happens, and you've just got to adjust on the fly. And by the way, what if I, I wasn't a pre-planned vacation day? Like, what if I had a real family emergency and I was totally disconnected from the phone? Like, what is Joe going to do in that spot? He's got to learn because that moment could happen, God forbid. You know, Don't panic in that spot. He's been on the show for six months, right? Right. Six months. And we touted the guy as the second coming three months ago or whatever it was. It's a bad sign. It's a bad sign. And you can only hope you can only hope he's not becoming Matt Ryan after the 6-1 star here. It's a great here. point. It's a great point. You know, you have these, uh, these wonderful rookie season statistics, and then you come back in year two, and it's a sophomore jinx, and you can't get out of your own way. Can't have it. Got to be a learning experience from Joe. I'm going to get into it with him here in a little bit. All right, so we'll hear from that coming up next as uh, Mraz and Jolton Joe break down Jolton Joe's Monday from Hell. All right, welcome into Side B of the Permission Granted Podcast. I'm the executive producer of the DA Show, Sean Morass, joined by the associate producer of the DA Show, Jolton Joe D'Aloisio, the podcast legend, Joe D'Aloisio. Joe, how are you? I like that title. Thank you very much. I'm surprised you're not already booked, like, that you're going to be able to do this podcast with us since you, apparently you do so much in Green Bay now. I mean, it was one hit. Let's take it easy. But I was able to pencil you guys in, of course, anytime for the uh, Permission Granted podcast here. Well, thank you so much for the time. And there's really something I, I got to get right into. A couple of weeks ago on the Permission Granted podcast, uh, DA and myself really broke down the prospects of you as kind of like a five-tool player, an up-and-comer in the, in the CBS Sports Radio network. As far as your producing skills and how much how the ceiling was there, and we generally meant a lot of that stuff. Joe, you might have to get sent to AAA after what went down on Monday night. What happened? Okay, so now for those of you who might have listened to the show Monday night, you might have realized my portly self was not there. Uh, I had why weren't you there? I had extra vacation days to use, and I figured with the, my beloved New York Giants playing on Monday night, why not use the day instead of staring at the first half of the game three ahead. So I used the day. I went Christmas shopping during the day. I had a nice little Monday. It turned into a three-day weekend. It was good. I'm glad you had a wonderful Monday. I did. I did. I had a great Monday. So with all that being said, 
Jolton Joe decides, well, I shouldn't say decides. Jolton Joe is going to produce the show and work for me. For some reason, though, Joe, instead of me having off, it was, you know, I, I let you know on the way out, Friday, hey, you need anything, let me know. Boy, did you take advantage because I didn't stop hearing from you throughout the whole freaking day. You're over exaggerating. I may have contacted you about four times. And I needed help. Four, I needed help. Four times this is a lot, and it was more than four let's times. Let's be honest. This is your show, right? Well, it's our show. It's our show, okay, but you are the executive producer. So okay. I'm not going to try to mess anything up, try to step over your, that boundary. I want to make sure what I'm doing is correct because I don't want to mess up the flow or well, anything. here's the problem with that, and, I, and I'll get to the, the problems that you had in a second. The problem with what you just told me is, A, this isn't your first rodeo. You've filled in for me before. This isn't like the first day I've taken off. Of course, but there was a few extra speed bumps this time. Okay. All right, so let's just break it all down. I go to Roosevelt Field Mall in Long Island, do a little Christmas shop with my buddies during the day. Joe contacts me. Oh, well, not no, 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 no. Let's start this story <laughs> over. Because Joe gets home Monday morning at 3 a.m. Because I produce Sunday nights here on CBS Sports Radio. I get home at 3 a.m. I fall asleep by 4 a.m. I wake up to a wonderful text message from you, Mraz, saying, Oh, hey, by the way, did you get that email? Our guest bailed. Yes. Uh, we had a guest scheduled. Uh, I won't mention the guest's name, but they had another uh, commitment that came up. So the guest that I had booked for Joe and done his job, basically, in booking that guest. Wonderful job you did because he certainly came through <laughs> he for He didn't us. come through. So I wanted to let Joe nice and early. Now, I could have slipped up and not checked my email, but I did that. So Joe goes into panic about well, who am I going to get to replace? I'm like, hey, listen, get, a, get an NFL guest. Joe ends up getting Brady Quinn, solid guest. Now, the backstory behind Brady Quinn coming on the show Monday was... Joe was looking for a guest to book. Asked DA for a couple inputs of a guy we haven't had on in a while. Talks some NFL. DA wanted Brady Quinn. Joe comes to me. Joe's text to me is, "Hey, can you see if Brady Quinn can come on for me now?" Okay, and here's another. Re okay, so you're now. Can I see or can you see this? conversation is totally out of context. No, that's what you asked me. Is that not what you asked me? A hundred percent, that's what I asked okay. you because I know that you have some sort of a relationship right. with Brady. I okay. do not. Okay, so so, so Joe, I thought by you asking, it would just speed up the process. Joe, now I'm going to tell you how you should have rephrased that, okay? You should have rephrased it as, hey, DA wants Brady Quinn. I know you have some sort of relationship. Would you mind reaching out to him? Or would you would you give me the contact and I could reach out to him? No, you went straight to, can you reach out to him? So for that purpose, I was at the gym. I said, you know what? No, screw you, Joe. Here's Brady Quinn's contact, which I was nice enough to share with you. Very nice of you. And Thank I, you. I appreciate that. And I let you reach out to him. But once again, like I said, I thought it'd be better off if you reach out to him. You're the executive producer. You've spoke to Brady on okay. several occasions and have now, a relationship with him. here's the problem with that. I'm off. You're never off. Get used to that. You're never off. Letting you know that the guest bailed and giving you the Brady Quinn contact should have been enough in that spot. Now you're asking me to start doing work. I'm off, Joe. You send a vacation text message. Days, vacation Calm day. down. Well, then I got to be worried about checking my phone all day. It, as if you're not. Oh, uh, no. You, you're not on your phone all day, no matter what. Not when I'm off. Please. That is the biggest bunch of Get malarkey. Of I've ever, you're, everybody's on their phone 24 7. Not me. Don't even start. Not me. Not when I'm hanging with buddies. Oh, please. So, That's anyway. Why you're tweeting away. Oh, OBJ touchdown. I love the Giants. Woohoo. Little. First of all, that's not. That's not. I give you meat on the bone, my tweets. That was none of that. That was none Thanks, of that. Timmy. You know that. Yeah. <laughs> Get lost. So, now I'm shopping in the mall. A couple hours have passed since Brady Quinn contact was given to Joe. And I got a text from him freaking out. Oh, my God. I haven't heard from Brady yet. I don't know what to do. I have a couple of the guest ideas. But DA now is an answer. My text message has been a half an hour since DA's answered me. Like, DA's not entitled to have his life while he's off before the show. And you're having a nervous breakdown, Joe. And what I tell you? I said, Joe, calm down. I said, give it another half an hour. You're right. You okay. did tell me to calm down. And what I happened? Would, did Brady Quinn get back to Brady you? Brady Quinn ended up getting back to me, yes. Everything worked out in the end. Okay. I'm just a nervous Nelly. I want things to go perfect. You I want to things down. to go smoothly. Yes, I do need to calm down. I agree with you. You need to calm down. I need to calm down. When I take over in the big chair, I get nervous. I want to put on a good show. I want to impress DA. And sometimes I get very bent out of shape. Okay. But now all this gets said and done. I'm out of fine time Christmas shop, and I finish up my Christmas shop, and my buddies... We're going to hit happy hour before the Giant game. We're all going to come back to my parents' house, watch the Giants. We're going to go to happy hour. Because, you know, working the hours we work in the East Coast, we uh, Monday through Friday, we don't get to experience the happy hour experience. So why not? Let's go Let's go out for some cheapo beers, some, some you know, cheap eats, if you will. 
Uh, we go to a bar in town. We're hanging out. Good deals. Two furs, that whole deal. And then suddenly what happens? I get a text from Joe. Hey, do you remember a caller asking about uh, why the sky is blue a, while, uh, a couple weeks ago? I, right away, my head was going to explode. <laughs> Because I remember what you told, like it hit me. Now, mind you, we get how many calls a night? We might get too many. 20, too many. No, we love the calls. We might get 20 calls a night, maybe more. Uh, And not all of them do we remember. This one I happen to do remember. Didn't remember the person's name. Ends up being Howard in Salem, Massachusetts. The almighty Howard. The problem is you say a couple weeks ago. I know damn well this wasn't a couple weeks ago. This and I I said earlier in September. No, that was not what you said. You said a couple weeks ago. I have my cell phone right now. And I came back. I go, I don't think it was a couple weeks ago. I bet you that was more like September was my thought process. Okay? You come back at me. Oh, okay. Well, did you have it saved as the epic fail? I go, okay, so go through all the epic fails I've saved. You said it wasn't an epic fail. So now you got me, my mind's racing, you know, I got my buddies are chugging beers, having a good time, and I'm sitting there worried about when somebody asked you when a freaking sky was blue. I, it's him on my mind, I go, can, you know, can a guy get a break? Finally, I call you back and I tell you exactly, you know, through our system. And you used your noggin more on your day off than you ever do when you're here, Did actually. I not deliver you? You the- delivered in a tremendous way, and I wouldn't have been able to get what we needed if it wasn't for you. So credit to you, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Right. Problem was... You ruined my entire happy hour. It was a very unhappy hour. I'm not happy about it. I'm sure you drank plenty, you ate plenty, and you enjoyed the game later on in the evening. I totally forgot about earlier in the day. If I forgot about it, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. Okay? So now that we get this all settled, I text you everything. I got it, buddy. I got it. Okay, good. My next question would be, now, I don't know who to blame here. I'm really stuck as a guy who wasn't here. Do I blame you or do I blame DA for the following question? With myself out as the executive producer and you win, okay? DA now, because this Howard and Salem mass, I guess, called back, called, I was getting tweets. Is DA more to blame that he wants to dig up a call from we don't know how long ago at the time? Or are you more to blame that DA can't trust you to get that job done and you need me to blame? Like, should DA, in other words, should DA have simplified the offense without myself there. Like, is that what you feel? Or was DA in the right wants the show to continue as normal even if I wasn't there and you you essentially failed them because you don't know how to think on your toes? No, I failed. I guess you'd say I failed. Are you afraid to take a shot at DA? DA should have simplified the offense. In what way? There's no possible way that he could have simplified the well, offense. Well, yeah, he could have just brought up like this guy called again and not wanted you to go dig up that call. No, but he wanted that call so we needed to get it. That's what it comes down to. I mean... What was I going to knock at the call? Let me read a let me read a uh, text from Joe last night. I'm glad he brought this up. "Quote: I mean, could DA calm down here? <laughs> no. Okay. So, so now you're lying. So now okay. you're saying you need to simplify. And, no, no, uh, we no, don't need I, to. I roped you in here because that's what you thought of DA last night. No, I was flustered because I had to do everything last night. Okay, which include when when you're here, you're doing plenty of stuff. I'm not saying you do nothing. Okay. I run the board. You do the producing job. Right. I had to do a mix of both yesterday. Okay. I was on the board for three and a half of the four hours. Right. So I had so much going on that I was just very flustered. And I, like I said, I'm a- You should have let Dennis run the board. He was more than capable. I'm a perfectionist, and I know how DA wants his things. I'm familiar with working with DA. I know he wants everything to be smooth- so I decided, which it's my fault. Maybe I should have let Dennis run the board longer. Mm-hmm. But I thought for the better of the show, so there wouldn't be any hiccups, that I would take the responsibility. Well, now you learn. Don't take too much responsibility, Joe, because you can't handle responsibility. I can handle responsibility. And that's going to do it for Side B of the Permission Granted podcast. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at CBS. You could follow the worthless piece of garbage producer Joe DeLuiso at Joe Joe D CBS yeah and listen to him for every freaking podcast in the state of Wisconsin as well uh, thank you guys for listening it's been a very enjoyable Permission Granted podcast from my standpoint take care happy holidays